Hello everyone, Rochelle White, you are the early bird today, the very first person, the quickest, the fastest, Adeleke Adeneye, bless you, party part, Adeleke Adeneye, I've been hearing, I've been seeing you a lot here, but I've not ever spoken to you, I don't know much about you, I think uh, you, you need to, we need to find a way of talking one day, or uh, maybe you need to be featured on uh, Kingdom Fruit. Of course, that's if you are doing anything tangible. I hope you are doing something tangible with the teachings you've been receiving. If you are doing something tangible, let's feature you. I would like, to, I personally would like to know more about you. So, uh, so that is a delicate because he's been quite constant here. So, good to know what he's doing. Yeah, so who are the people here? We have Eric Lindu. You are one of the first ones today. Ola BC, Ola Leye, Mahi Eki, Marie Eki, Rinde Benro, Amarashi Jerry, Joyce Ero, Ayotude Odusoya, Francois, Theophilus, Paul Good News, Adelika Adeni, Grace, Ori Yomi, Yakubu Farida, Shao Smith, uh, Maya, Ufooma, Emma, Waspi, Daniel Atsenga. Beautiful, beautiful people. Who did I miss? Nike Okpanoga. That lady should be my Jebu people, either her or her husband. I could tell from the name. Or Monique. Wellington, Wellington, Gushu, Edwin, Amimi. I've been looking for you, Edwin. I can't get you for two days now. You have disappeared. I know you have been looking for me too, but <laughs> I've been looking for you, for sure. Paul Oriade, Ayodeji Solomon. Well, as we are coming in, will you please be kind enough to go share the message with your friends? I want. To, I have a surprise for all your people today. It is Kate that has prepared this surprise for for all, all of us. So quickly go and share before I I play this. I uh, display to you the surprise. Quickly go share this thing with somebody, and then uh, it will be more interesting that way. So please go and check on uh, your check uh, your playlist. I mean your sh uh, share share video. Look under your video and see the share button. Press that share button. Invite the people you, you really care about. Or invite them one, one by one. And then I'm going to have a little surprise for all of us today. I'm going to do this uh, a couple of times today, maybe. Uh, we might, we, we're doing that all the time now. Okay. So go share the link. Thank you, Theophilus has shared it. Only Theophilus has shared it with his friends. Ooh, wow. Let's go share with all our friends. Okay, Ori, your me too has done it. But not too many people have shared it publicly. Only two people have shared publicly. I'm talking publicly now. I'm not saying you didn't share on your on your what? On your page. But I'm talking sharing it with your friends. With your friends, I think. Yeah, with your friends. Yeah, so I have a surprise for you. If you have not shared the link yet. I'm sorry, your friends will miss it. And then they are going to say, why did you share that? Why did you share with me? Why did you call me on time? I didn't want to miss this. So I don't want you people to miss it. I was thinking we should, read, we should hit a, a hundred before I, before I do this little surprise for all of you. Not a big deal, but you know, pleasant surprise, I think, I hope, for the, for the platform, for us, for all of us, for our family. So I think this should be something quite pleasant to all of you. So two more people to hit, then I'm going to go to my surprise for you. Just two more people to hit, two more people to go. Oh, now we are less. Now we are ready, yes. Uh, I think you might need to hold it. You might need to hold it. Yeah, you might need to hold it. No, hold it up to yourself. Sit down, sit down. Yeah, that way. Yeah. 
Let me show that Mr. Fry here. Let me show this. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Can you people see it? Let's do it again because you are not ready before, right? You didn't know what to expect. So let's see. Let's see it another, do it another way. Huh? Is better this one? It's not good? Oh, you're, you're cutting out my hand. Well, that's about that, you know. I think we'll do, we'll do it a few times. That's like advert uh, break, or what do you call it? Br advert break? or yeah. What do you call it? Break? break. Advert? Yes, break. Yeah. So we're going to be doing this kind of advertisement break uh, every day. So I'm going to, you know, remind me to do a few times of this. I think we're going to be doing that. Is that a good idea? It's a trailer, yeah. It is Kate Caronis, my assistant. The, the the this the brilliant Kate, she's the one who came up with this idea to be doing the whatever I call it a trailer yeah a trailer, so I think we should be doing a trailer like that for all our all our series. That's a good idea. I think also Kate, I mean, uh, you you girls, you also we also need to do a trailer like that for Movement Against Deception. Okay. Yeah, so we need to do that. Uh, interlude, yeah, that's break, yeah. The break is called interlude, yes. Interlude. We're going to be doing interlude with this kind of thing. Yeah, that's, I think that's a great idea. Interval, in trailer, right? Interval, trailer, or interlude. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> Everybody seems to like it. Everybody. So let's give a round of applause to Kate. That is, that is Kate. Really. Yeah. Everybody seems to be happy about it. <laughs> little, little joy. You don't need too many things to be happy in life. You don't need too many things to be happy in life. Just little, little things make you happy. You see, Pastor Sunday is happy. Did I get a million dollars? No, I don't need it. I just need Kate to do some wonders like that as well. <laughs> you know, did I just win a jackpot? No, no. Just somebody doing their job. Just somebody doing their job without being told. You see, the problem with people like me as a leader is that I always have to tell everybody what to do, and that is frustrating for any leader. But when a lead, when you, one of your subordinates and assistants do things, not because you've told them to do it, but because they think, they use their mind. Oh, what a joy! <laughs> it, it is Hitler that says, what a joy it is for leaders not to think. But for me, I mean, for you know, what a joy it is for masses for people not to think what a joy it is that people don't think what he said actually is that what a joy it is for leaders that people don't think so that is hitler who said that what a joy it is what a great joy it is 
What a great joy it is for leaders that masses don't think. <laughs> but for me, it's a big tragedy that masses don't think. <laughs> I think that is satanic spirit that makes keep that to say that. And a lot of leaders who, who think like that, I think it's demonic to be happy that people don't think. But in my own case, I am, it's a tragedy for me that people don't think. It's not a joy that people don't think. It's a tragedy that people don't think. And when I get somebody who think, or some once in a while, like Kate, once in a while, she, you know, once in a while she wakes up. Once in a while she wakes up. Once in a while she wakes up. So that's a big jackpot for me. That's a big joy for me. Why? Because some people never wake up. Some people never wake up. <laughs> some people are perpetually sleeping. <laughs> they never ever wake up. So when somebody wakes up like that, like Kate, it brings me a lot of joy. You see the kid, the baby, the child come out of Father Sunday. Father Sunday begins to... <laughs> To be on the seventh heaven like a child, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I really need people to think around me. I need people to think. That's why I did that series. I need people to think. I didn't just do the series for you guys. Mm -hmm. I did for myself too because I want people around me to begin to think, you see. <laughs> when I'm teaching you, I'm also thinking about myself, you see. I want to get something from it. Because I want people surround me to begin to think, you see. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Thinking is a good thing. Thinking is a good thing. So, if, so I've had somebody say that the reason why people don't think is that it's a difficult thing to do. I said, no! Who says that? I know it's a great guy who said it. It's Henry Ford who said that, actually. <laughs> Henry Ford said it. That it's, a, it's the most difficult thing to do to think. I said, wow, who said? I don't know why Henry Ford said that. But for me, it's the greatest pleasure to think. That's why I'm, think, I'm teaching people to think. The greatest pleasure to think. And the easiest thing to do in the world to think. So I really want you people on DSA family to join the company of the thinking nation of the thinking people. We are a thinking nation. We are a thinking nation. Yeah, we are a thinking nation. So, Kate, voila. <laughs> High five to you, Kate. Voila. She's not here. She's gone home. She's not here. She stays half of the week in my house and half of the week she goes to help her mother. She stays in her own family half, half of the week, so it's okay. Somebody is writing something there. Do not keyboard. Wow, keyboard. Hello, DSA. I wrote a short song of freedom, which I'm releasing this week. Wow. I will be. It will be a great, a good. It will be. It will be good for accompanying the break. Who? Oh, okay. Let me see. Let me see. It. Won't you release it? Is there any way we could support you? You want us to support you anyhow? You want us to come and put some like there, or you want us to come and buy it? What do you want us to do? You know, whenever you release it, let us know. Let us know how we could support you. All right. So this week, the plague of silence. But the topic of today, I don't know what topic. They didn't ask me for the topic. Did you ask me for the topic? Oh, yeah. We already had the announcement. So I already had the announcement. The topic of today is the culture of silence equals culture of evil. The culture of silence equals the, question, the culture of evil. The culture of silence equals the culture of evil. The culture of silence equals the culture of evil. The culture of silence is the same thing as the culture of evil. So the culture of silence equals the culture of evil. Now, as I was preparing for this message last night, I was actually doing the preparation last night. 
Uh, God inspired upon my heart that he would like me to take this message not just to the you know out of the realm of the church or the society and i felt that god was telling me that the culture and the plague of silence is not just in relations to the culture or to the church but it, that the plague of silence is killing the homes and the family as well so god told me that today today's message that i must address the plague of silence in relations to how that is killing the home the family and that uh, the plague of silence is also a plague the same horrible plague it is for the society the same evil that silence brings to society is the same evil it silence brings to the homes and to the families and um, so today the culture of silence equals the culture of evil means that anybody that propagates the culture of silence that is to say don't talk put it under don't expose it don't reveal it don't talk about it and especially if that is not just saying it's because there is there is there are moments when the Bible says that love covers the multitude of sins, right? That's totally different because love is because is love is when you want to salvage and help somebody and because of what they have done to hurt you, you want, for example, let's say, let me give you an example how this happens, how this works. Love covers multitude of evil. Let's say your husband is abusive and he because this is what God really showed me while I was preparing for this he showed me a family where a husband has been abusive not necessarily physical but just morally and any form of abuse in the family and says that this culture of silence is plaguing a lot of homes that we must raise our voice against it now the fact that I say that doesn't mean that we are against the individual who did the evil. I don't know if you get it. For example, let's say the husband is wicked and abusive to you as a husband, as a wife, and you are the wife who wants to be the example. You want them? To, you want them? You don't want them to complain about you, no, or you don't care? Yeah. Okay, no, call, you can call me that. Then. Okay, let's say this is the wife. Uh, my wife is the wife and you have a husband and your husband has been abusive, to, abusive towards you so but you love him and you want to cover and you said but pastor but the bible says that love covers a multitude of sin uh, i don't want him to go to jail i don't want to expose him i don't want him you know to really be disgraced in that time, in that sense, you want to apply the principle of love. Love that covers the multitude of sin. I don't want him to be destroyed. I don't want his life to be ruined. But what do I do then? How do I apply this principle that the culture of silence is a culture of evil? So, is it evil or is it love? So, there is a controversy here. Is that evil? If I go ahead and expose him, is that evil or is that love? Or if I cover for him and I don't do anything, is that evil or is that love? So let me now exp explain to you how this works. So let's say your husband is abusive towards you. What should you do? I would like to answer this question and say, if you cover for him, as an individual so that it will not be destroyed and you see you see you could see that he has a weakness and you really want to protect him as an individual that is love but if you go ahead and cover for him to the extent that you actually cover 
the abuse and you, you know, you, you put it under and you don't do anything against the abuse or about the abuse, then you are, that is evil right there. So it's a thin line between the good, between love and evil. So the love is that you don't want to expose him. So you don't want to destroy him. So you say, okay, I will not report him to the police. Or I will not press a charge against him. Or I will uh, still, you know, maintain relationship with him. But that is only, that is only as long as him personally. Why are you hiding? Put your face here. So, but what you need to come a bit here. Yeah. Yeah, yes, yes, that's what you need to do. But if you, what happens is, if you keep on covering and actually hiding the fact that that evil happened, then you are a particle of evil. So what I mean is that, so what is the right thing to do? The right thing to do will be for you to say, I love you. I am not going to put up with this and pack your load and leave. If you pack your load and leave, even though you left, but you still love him in your heart, you are not experiencing any hatred towards him. That is love. And that is loving the truth above being sentimental. So that means you are not a partaker of evil. That means you are fighting against the plague of silence. Now, another thing you should do to go ahead beyond that is, even though you didn't press charge against him, but you should never keep quiet about it. You should still go ahead and talk against abuse and violence in the family. You should go ahead and talk against what they call it, domestic abuse. It, but when you talk about domestic uh, against domestic abuse, if you love him, love says don't mention his name. Love says don't expose him. But not to be an accomplice also says you must expose this problem itself, the evil. The evil itself must be exposed. Even though you are not exposing him, but you are exposing the evil. I don't know if you get it. Yeah. You following me? Yeah. So, so there, are, there are two areas here. It, it's, it's like it's very tough. And a lot of women don't know how to cope with this. A lot of women actually go in and sit in that family and remain in that home. But then they are saying, but we are married, but we are husband and wives, but, uh, but, you know, but I love him, but I don't want him to be exposed. But that way, they go from love to evil. They go from love to just committing evil right there. Right there. Because they have remained quiet in the face of evil. And, they, and their silence means consent. So they have actually con no, approved of evil. They have actually not just approved of evil, they have actually become a culprit in evil. They have actually become guilty of that same evil. So what I'm saying is that the fact that you do something about it doesn't mean that you don't love. Let me even go further than that. Now, let's say that your husband refuses to let you go. And say that you will not leave my house. I am your husband. You are all, even the, despite the fact that you, you are trying to stop that evil, but it's becoming aggressive towards you. Or trying to limit you and trying to control you, then love says, love says that you should not just don't keep quiet, even though you love him, if you truly love him, if his level of aggression 
and his level of abuse is going from the minimum level to the next level of aggression. And you are seeing that aggression that is increasing. is actually pressing charge against you. He's actually trying to sub suppress you or to subdue you. So he's not stopping. So whatever action you have taken, he has not stopped. And maybe it's misunderstanding your love for weakness. So when he is thinking that you refused, to, you didn't go report me. Oh, she will never report me, and so I'm becoming more aggressive. What do you then do? What you now do is you go to the police station and report him. You must go to the police station and report him now. But I love him, but I don't wish him. I don't wish any bad thing to happen to him. I love him. But that is the best demonstration of your love. That is the, the best demonstration of your love. That you will go and report him. Because by reporting him that way, you have not just saved your own life, but you have actually saved his own life as well. You have not just protected yourself legally, but you have protected him too. So, then you say, what about if they lock him up? Locking him up might be the best thing that you have done. Let me tell you, let me use another example. Let's say you are my, I know people right now, you are a mother, I know mothers like this in the UK right now as we are talking. Even maybe there are some mothers like this on this platform right now. But I know mothers in the UK, in the US, In fact, even in my own church here right now in Ukraine, I know mothers like this. What, is they, what do they do? Mothers have a big problem dealing with their adolescent children or with their, you know, ch ch uh, boys that misbehave. Okay, let's, let me give you a very practical example that, that, that is happening right now. A mother notices that the son started stealing from the house. So it will steal from the mother. The mother will say, oh, don't tell your dad, don't tell your dad. I love you. That is love. No problem, I agree. It is because of the love of the mother, that is love. She loves him and she doesn't want, because if your father hears, he's going to beat you, he's going to make you hurt, he's going to, you know, you know really punish you or he's going to get bad. Okay. That's okay for the first time. But it happened the second time. Maybe that is still love. Then it happened the third time. And you are saying, okay, it's between me and you. We will not tell mommy, I mean daddy. That is now becoming a problem. That is now becoming an accomplice a little bit. Then it happened the third time. And you still didn't tell the father. Is that? And then, now, what happens is, you know what it does the, right, the next time? It goes and steals from the father. <laughs> so you don't need to tell the father. It became a big news. Who stole it? You stole my mother. Yes. Then the father becomes aggressive. And the father begins to make noise and say, you know that your son has been doing this and now he has told him. No, the father begins to not just be aggressive against the child. The father now begins to criticize and attack not just the child, but the father begins to attack the mother. So because the mother did not put a boundary and did, could not tell where the difference is between love and accomplice and being an accomplice, and a culprit of evil, she blew it. So now, the evil doers in the eyes of the father is not just this child, but the mother as well. But let's say the mother, the father, that is one situation. The father didn't know. Okay. Let me give you another scenario. This child and the father, no, this child didn't steal from the father. This same child didn't steal from the father. But he kept on stealing and the mother kept on hiding it. 
and say, my good son, and say, I'm praying to God, I'm praying to God, I'm praying to God. That mother, she is now committing sin. Even though she's praying to God. But this is not a God's case. Oh, I'm praying to God that God will stop, help my, stop my son stop steal, stealing. Then she is come calling him. Of course, she's talking to him. Don't steal. You know, this is bad. Look what the Bible said. But she's not talking to the father. She's not raising an alarm. She's being silent. You remember the culture of silence equals the culture of evil. And you remember that when you are silent in the presence of evil, you are actually sanctioning, endorsing that evil. So even though she's praying to God, but praying to God nevertheless means you are condoning it. The fact that you are, this is not a God thing. Even though you are praying to God, but that does not cancel your own responsibility. While you are praying to God, you must act. But when you just pray to God that God should help deliver your son and set him free from stealing, and you are not doing anything about it, and you are not speaking out, and you are not raising an alarm, you are becoming an accomplice. You know what happens? This, I've seen this same example a thousand and one times. You know what that child does? Even when the father knows about it, sometimes the father doesn't know about it. But sometimes, most of the time, even the father could know about it. See what happens, my wife. So, instead of this, what were they, let's say the father now knows about it, but the boy keeps on behaving wayward, keeps on stealing, or keeps on going to the party and messing up or doing bad things, right? You know what this leads to? Because the father and the mother, they have just been talking to them and keep to him and keeping it in the family, not talking out, not raising an alarm, not fighting it, not speaking against it, not raising an alarm. They are becoming accomplice, an, accom an accomplice, or they are becoming accomplices, accomplices, two of them. Now, what later happens is that they are keeping it in the family. You know, their whole idea is that this is our whole family. We love our family. And because it's our family, we don't want disgrace. Because it's our family, we want to protect our family. We want to protect the name of our family. We want to protect our child. He's our child. Nobody will care for him if we don't. Don't let anybody know. Don't let your relatives know. Don't let the family know. Don't let the police know. Don't let anybody know. Then you know what happens? One day! This child, what the father and the mother didn't know, is that the money he had been stealing, he had actually been stealing it and using it to buy drugs. But he didn't start out with drugs. He started out with stealing the money, just stealing, and using it to buy candy or things, and then started stealing and using it to buy, to go to a discotheque or to go after girls. Then one day, the police caused them. They didn't raise the alarm. They didn't want police to know. They didn't want anybody to know. But that evil itself, that is what happened with silence. When you are silent, the evil itself will expose you. <laughs> you cannot you fight evil through silence. You cannot, you know, conceive evil. It's in inconceivable. You cannot put it under the, on just, just say, okay, we'll just keep it here. He itself, it is the same evil that you are covering that will go and expose you. It is the same evil that you are covering that will go and make noise about you. So now, they didn't want the relatives to know. They didn't want the family to know. They didn't want every extended people to know. They didn't want the social, social council to know. They didn't want the welfare organization to know. They didn't want the police to know. Now, the, the, the police themselves are calling. Oh, we have your son here in jail. Everything is just gone a wire. From didn't want anybody to know to absolutely becoming a disgrace. And now they couldn't tell the police that oh, we knew. So you knew? Why didn't you take him to the rehab center? Why didn't you do anything about it? Why didn't you stop it? Because they did not raise an alarm that evil could not be stopped. And that evil had just progressed. So, love, therefore, is in the case that you have rebuked the child, you have covered for him one time, covered for him second time, covered for him third time, same with husbands. And he continues, 
it is no more love. It is no more love for you to keep on covering, covering for him. Because if you keep on covering for him like that, you, you are not loving him. You are actually accompanying him. You are actually consenting his evil. You are actually becoming a partner in evil. And that evil now will raise the alarm against you. And God, the God that you are praying to will not protect you. And you'll be wondering, why is it that we are praying to God? We are going to night vigils. We are going to prayer houses. We are uh, praying to God. We are going to men of God. We, you know, they are praying men of God or no men of God. Or, are not, you know, whatever. Night prayers, no night prayer, night vigils. He's no more going to help. God is just going to go hmm? deaf and mute on you. I think that's what you are going to feel like. <laughs> you would think God has gone deaf and mute you on, on you. And the reason is because God has principles. God has order. God has his way of model of thinking. And God has his principles that will not be violated just because of you. So the question I'm, I'm the question I'm raising today is how come God says love covers a multitude of sin and then I've got to go and report my son because if you if you cover for him the first time and he's still doing the evil cover for him the second time and he's still doing the evil cover for him the third time and he's still doing the evil that is no more covering for him. That is no more love that covers multitude of evil. Because you already have multitude right there. <laughs> and if you keep on covering for him at that point, you become an accomplice with him. And that evil is going to grow. And that evil will grow to be a volcano. And you know, when volcano erupts, you don't conceive it. Nobody has succeeded in conceiving you know, and the eruption of a, of a volcano. It's going to come out big and loud. <laughs> and it's going to overwhelm you. It's going to, it's not going to be pretty. It's going to be much worse than you had, you had wanted to prevent. Because when you say, oh, it's my family, it's our name, oh, what our people think about our family, you think you love your family that way? Mm -mm. Because the eruption of that, the eruption of that volcano will destroy that good name you've been trying to protect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Same with husbands that are abusive. Have you ever lived or stayed with an abusive husband? He has maybe slapped you or pushed you one time, and you say, "Oh, hey." You know, I cannot even believe this. Can you believe it? That there are Africans in Europe, in England, or in America, where there are laws. I mean, it's one thing if this is happening to you in Africa, okay? But how come there are abusive homes, domestic violence, in Christian homes in Europe? Where the, you are protected by the law. But you know what people tell me? This happens every day. And you know what ladies tell me? Ah, pastor, oh, you know, I'm just afraid for him. Oh, I don't want them to, if I go and report, eh, if I write the, what, the application against him, if I write the report, pastor, but they're going to put him in jail. I don't want them to put him in jail. Uh, you know, I'm just afraid for him. But he's not afraid for himself, my dear. I'm just trying to pity him. Well, he's not pitying himself, my bro my sister. Well, I'm just trying to be protective of him. Mm, maybe you should let him do that. <laughs> maybe that's his own function to do. Maybe that's his own responsibility to protect himself. Huh? <laughs> you cannot protect somebody who doesn't want to protect himself now. There is no way you can you can you can fight you can love him more than he loves himself. So, but these ladies actually, you know, endure and they keep quiet. Let me tell you the principle. So, and then they begin to quote. But the Bible says, uh, "Love covers multitude of sin." I agree with that. If let's say, for example, that he is struggling with a sin in his life, 
maybe smoking or he's uh, masturbating or he's watching pornography. So, but something that doesn't affect you. It's just his own life. It's just that's just your own life. Then you could cover for him and pray for him and support him. That is something. But when he's, he's whatever he's doing is affecting other people, like you, is abusing you. It's been abusive to you, and you are telling me love covers. Okay, when will that love covers end? When will it stop? At what point will it? When he kills you? <laughs> now it was first of all shouting at you. You said love covers. Okay, now we that one. Okay, we hear. He from went from shouting to screaming. You said love covers. Okay, we hear. Now he went from screaming to humiliating you in words to humiliating you with you know morally to dominating you to suppressing you as a human being. That is called an abuse right there. And you say, well, I'm afraid, you know, I don't know. And you are just, you are already at the verge of committing suicide. And you are saying you don't know. Ah, ah. So you love him and you hate yourself. So at that point, when it is no more love covers multitude of sin. Because that multitude of sin is going to kill you. So, and you have, you have used that principle. You, you know, you, <laughs> you have used that principle already. <laughs> you, already you already used, applied that principle. And it's not your problem that, you know, he keeps on doing that. That's his own problem that he keeps on doing that. He is the one that is not changing. If you have forgiven him the first time, if you have forgiven him the second time, if you have forgiven him the third time, you know, it is time for you to apply the second principle. And the second principle is silence in the face of evil is to be an accomplice of that evil. It means that for you to cover for the evil deed of somebody like that, it is not going to just going to stop there. That guy is going to go from abusive relationship, being abusing you to terrorizing you. He's going to go from mouth abuse to physical abuse. Believe me. Evil never stops at by itself. Evil must be resisted before it stops. Evil doesn't stop by itself. Evil must be resisted. So if you don't resist it, it will keep on growing. Let me tell you what. One of the main reasons why men all over the world think it is their right to beat a woman, to abuse a woman, to subdue a woman, to subject a woman to humiliation is because everything is all going, is all permitted. The culture permitted it. Or, you know, it not, they are going on, on, um, unpenalized. It's because they are not being penalized. It's because they are not being punished for it. It's because they know they could go scot-free. It is because many of them are coming from countries and, you know, you know, nations where these things are not punished. And they are used to the fact that these things are not punished. The Bible says, resist the enemy and he will flee, flee from you. Resist evil. Resist the enemy. Resist the devil. And we'll, if you don't resist evil, evil will not stop by itself. Evil doesn't stop by itself. Evil will keep on multiplying, progressing until it dominates you. And whatever you tolerate, you are actually asking for it to dominate you. You need to resist evil. But the Bible says resist the, the devil. Resist the enemy. Resist Satan. Resist you know, evil. Resist Satan. And it will flee from you. If you don't resist it, it doesn't stop by itself. It's going to dominate you. So, what I saw when I was preparing this message, God spoke to me because the last time yesterday when I spoke about this subject, I was just addressing the church situation and national situation. But God spoke to me, I want you to address family and homes. I said, okay, with silence? He said, yes. That is one of, God spoke to me, that is one of the, in fact, I saw a picture in my mind when God was speaking to me about addressing this plague of silence. He said, the plague of silence is biggest in homes than in the society. 
is the plague of silence is only prominent in the society because it had first of all been allowed. It had first been allowed. It has first been permitted in the homes and in families. And God told me that if people, if you know the amount of people, I didn't, you know, this is what God just spoke to me. If you know, if you knew, if you were to know the amount of families, the amount of homes where abuses are taking place, it doesn't matter what number are being reported. Normally, they only report the extreme cases. That's what came to my heart, what I saw in the spirit, that it is, in fact, the abuse, in fact, God even told me that all domestic abuse, all of them could stop. At least it could be reduced to bare, to the bare minimum. It could be reduced like 90%. The case, all cases of domestic abuse. But it's going to be reduced only when everyone that comes across it at all, in any form of relation, begins to raise their voice. So it is only the culture of not, no, not, not compromise that will stop the culture of abuse. The culture of abuse will not stop. Abuse won't stop by itself. Evil won't stop by itself. So in the, this domestic abuse and the domestic violence that people talk about, it is spreading, it is growing, and it's going to grow more and more. And the reason is because women are intimidated, and even because churches go, and I saw this also when I was preparing for this. God showed me that even churches are spreading, not this thing I'm saying, churches are spreading. Churches are rather spreading the culture of silence. That churches are telling people to keep quiet. That churches are telling people to cover. Churches are telling people to endure. Churches are telling people to be quiet. Churches are telling people to be patient. Churches are telling people to be, no, to, to just put it under, to leave it alone, to not to touch it, not to raise any alarm, not to raise any voice, not to say anything. And because it is the prominent, I mean, the, the, you know, the, the position of the society and the position of the church, we are actually abating evil. We are the ones abating evil. We are the ones actually empowering evil. When we are quiet about evil, when we are quiet about the progression and the multiplication, the increase of evil, we are actually the ones foiling it. We are foiling the evil of domestic violence. And it's still the same thing with children. In the same thing, all kind of silence. You know, I want you to challenge yourself and to look around your life and your society and your church and your, your, your own life. What are the areas of life where people have told you you've got to be silent? And it's not just enough for you to just pack your load and leave. That is, you did not, that way you only saved your, your skin. But you have not been godly enough. You are, you are not being godly. Being godly means actually that you save your life but you go ahead and speak about it. Because what the Lord showed me when I, he was showing me this thing about the homes and how the plague of silence is killing homes is that because everybody that is affected or that has ever been affected by the issues of domestic violence, some of them keep quiet so that people will never even know that they suffer from it before. But if everybody will not just go and report to police, that's not even enough. But will start a campaign speaking against it publicly and boldly, if every rape victim will speak against it, you don't necessarily even need to say that you are raped. You don't even necessarily need to associate yourself with it. Even if you are a victim of domestic violence and you, know, you are still not healed to the end and you are intimidated and you are ashamed and you don't need to say I am the one or I was. Or you don't want to expose your husband because you love him. Okay, love him. You don't need to talk about your own home. But tell people, tell like from the third party that I know people have this problem. Or there are problems like this. I have seen this. People so become a campaigner. That is how evil will stop. That is how evil should be stopped. Even if evil are happening, evil, evil like this are happening in your home or in your family. 
or you don't need to expose your family because you oh I love my family I don't know what they will think I don't want them to say okay don't mention your family don't mention your husband don't mention your, that you are even a participant or a partaker of it just you know fight evil itself fight the evil the occurrence itself the sin you don't need to associate yourself but so the Lord showed me that if everyone who has experienced this kind of thing actually begins to speak against them and begin to expose them and begin to champion a campaign or an right article or your Facebook page or video or just or do interview with other people who just everybody begins to reveal and expose and talk about this that actually we could reduce the issues many issues issues like domestic violence we could reduce to be a minimum then the issues of rape you know there are different kind of rapes but the rape of you know the statistics in the world now says every one in every third woman has been raped before one out of three one out of three women has been raped and you know statistics the ones that really reported it is like 10 percent but mainly they report in the western world but on all over the world people don't even report but that is going to stop only through the culture of speaking out against evil now apart from that kind of rape there is also all kinds of rape. I just discovered recently there was this lady in my, who came to see me recently and she revealed to me another aspect of rape. Another as, as, aspect of rape is, and the, I, I didn't even know this, but this lady convinced me and showed me by her example, I do different examples that she knows, and, and it happened to her, that there is another form of rape that is even more silent that we don't know about. It is the rape when you know young girls are being abused and raped by relatives in the home or in the family home or in the relative home in the among the relatives rape among the relations relatives uh, rape among the relatives things like that happen for example in her own case she was a student in high school or primary school and she you know they sent her to her uncle you know who doesn't go to a uncle for holidays every kid wants to go for holidays and then they send you with another kid so you go to your relatives for holiday and your uncle not the small uncle in the house or the husband of the house the the big man that is supposed to be the the landlord is raping a five year old girl seven year old girl because she cannot talk she doesn't in fact this girl i think she was eight or nine she didn't even know what happened she didn't even know what that was it was only later on she got to know that oh because she, she just didn't even know what the how to describe she didn't even know the word for sex and i personally know that that is true because my son was 11 when i tried to talk to him about sex the first time and i told him paris sex what is sex can you tell me what sex is? have you heard of sex before I said, yeah i had it he said what is it i said, he said i don't know but the way people talk about it, it's like it's inside you somewhere it should be in your tummy somewhere He's 11 and was a top of sex. So I stuck less of a girl that is nine, seven. She doesn't even know what sex is. She doesn't know what, just, what was that. What just happened? What is that? So a lot of, you know, rape of, 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 of such are really going on. And then when she eventually told and other people, when they tell their mothers normally, their mothers, okay, don't, 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 don't tell papa. Don't let mom, papa know. Don't let, don't let anybody know. Okay, no problem. Oh, we don't want to spoil the relationship with the relatives or with the, our relatives or our uncle. So this is like family incest. Is, is it incest? It's yeah. called. Yeah, it's like incest. Yeah, mm -hmm. almost incest also because sometimes. incest is more like blood connected, but um, like parents and things. But this is like rape, you know. So I heard that a lot of this kind of rape happens, but they are also growing mainly because of. They are also growing mainly because of silence. Another form of rape that is also prominent that people in the developed world might not know about, but uh, that the West has begun to raise alarm on is the rape that happens within the family. I heard, and I, now I've come to realize it now more. 
And in fact, when I was having retreat, I do I used to do retreat seminars or retreat for or HMT for men in my own church. This was but if all these men themselves were telling me about their own relationship with their wives, and the day you won't know that could qualify for sex. I mean for rape. Okay, for example, one guy was telling me, and it I had to tell him that that's wrong. That is this is a guy that comes to church. You know, a lot of things happen in the name of family. People think it's family. No, since it's my, you are my wife. Okay, for example, let me tell you one instance that one guy told me about. He said, I don't know what's wrong with my wife. He was complaining, actually. I don't know what's wrong with my wife. How, so he was asking me a question, how to fix this problem. What's your problem? My wife, sometimes because I'm watching television after work, I'm tired, I'm watching TV, I ate, I need to watch TV for, but she goes to bed, to the bedroom that time. Or, you know, you know, she, she says she's tired, she goes to sleep. Or, uh, or you know, I, I'm still not ready for bed. Maybe I'm studying on I'm internet. So by the time I'm ready to go to bed, I come to the bedroom to her and she's sleeping. So, I said, so how do you resolve that? I, I try to wake her up, but she's sleeping. So what we have resolved, the way we have resolved this is this. Listen to this. You will not believe this. Oh. I just, whenever I go, I'm ready. I just go there, open her leg, and do what I need to do. And that's all. That's the way I've been satisfied myself. <laughs> I go there, she's sleeping. I go there, open her legs, and do what I need to do. And he is, he is complaining against her that she is the one not waking up. So, but she has also gotten used to, no, not gotten used to. I don't think a woman will ever get used to. I think, you know, so in the name of marriage, because she is thinking, because I got to speak to her later on, and she is telling me, you know, they have taught them in the church. You cannot refuse your husband. Sorry, guys. So, the problem is that in the church, a lot of pastors only emphasize the fact that if you're a woman and you are married, then you cannot refuse your husband. So, under that teaching, or that's Doctrine that you cannot refuse your husband. Women suffer a lot of atrocities against themselves. A lot of women suffer a lot of atrocities. <laughs> oh, sorry, you can go. So when I was talking to this woman eventually, that was her own excuse and her own explanation that we've been taught that, uh, you know, that uh, you never refuse your wife, your husband. And so, uh, you know, she said, I just lied there. Just lied there. Let him do whatever he wants to do. But I said, don't you feel used after that? Don't you feel used? Don't you feel that you are being used? Or you, don't you feel? She said, I feel terrible. I hate myself. I feel terrible. And then other men, women have told me a thousand of and thousand and one times that I feel like I'm a street girl. I feel like I'm a street girl. I feel like I mean, he only comes to it's as if he has bought me. As if 
He only comes to do what he needs to do and just goes about his own business. I'm sorry, guys. I didn't even get to, to open the scriptures. I have a scripture here. I have some quotation here, but I couldn't uh, kind of get into it today. But I would, anyway, what I would like to tell men today is that your wife, she's not just an object, you know. You could do that with a machine. You could do that with a sex object, with an object, but not with a human being. Because a human being has feelings. A human being has feelings, emotions. And because she has feelings and emotions, she also has will. Will. She's a human being. A human, human. So a consent is very important. Without a consent, it's actually like a rape. It's as good as a rape. Without a permission, without a willingness, it's as good as a violence against her. It's as good as raping her. So, uh, you know, that argument, I don't buy into it that, you know, because she's your wife, just do anything with. I didn't say what happened. I said what? I think for some horrible things must be happening in Africa that nobody even knows about. People have not been talking about, or churches have not been, you know, talking about, or people have not been raising. I, I wonder if these things have really been covered. Can you imagine how much evil is happening that way? Just because. Some people have been taught that they have to just swallow everything and be quiet about it all. So, um, what can I say now? I've actually not started my message. I will continue tomorrow. You know, we we do this every every uh, every day. I'm here twice a day. Uh, today, like today. 7 p.m. UK time, Nigerian time, and 12 noon uh, Eastern time in America. Uh, yeah, I'm here every day. And then earlier, two hours earlier, 5 p.m. Nigerian time, 5 p.m. UK time, and uh, 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern time in America as well, 2 p.m. Eastern time. So I'm here, and I'm going to continue this tomorrow. I, I've, like I said, I've not even opened the scripture yet. I've not even opened the scripture. And I have many scriptures here. And, um, you know, I think I should allow other people to speak. Carol White, you want to talk? Or anybody, you want to talk? Anybody? Okay, you uh, come and deliver them. <laughs> the ladies will come later. Right. Or oh, you, Victor, you want to be the first one? Yes, you are the, okay. Oh. Uh, if we got the he was talking about you yesterday that you're always the first one. <laughs> <laughs> But now you are in now. So I will follow you to do this. I'll scatter the place. <laughs> yeah, hello everyone once again. Good uh, evening. This is Anu. Well, it's uh, Dr. Sunday ended on a very, very um, emotional, uh, emotional note because, uh, you know, coming down to the level of family, uh, I think that is that is the basis of everything because uh, the nation that we see and the nation that we have is a product of what is going on in the in the home in the family and um, a nation that would be silent is a family that has developed that culture of silence so if there is silence in the family and that's nuclear that's just within let's say four or five people and things are going on there and no one can voice that out how much more on a larger scale of a nation and this this plague of silence and you know today um, the culture of silence um, being equal to the culture of evil is it is it is so important and uh, for me, I, I'm just thinking about how many, how many um, evils have prevailed 
in our nation because it prevailed in the family. I'm thinking about how many things are wrong with our nation right now. And it's easy, to, to, it's easy for us to blame the president. It is easy for us to blame the government. Uh, but it started from the family. It started with the, the physical abuse from the father to the mother that the children can see mm. what, they, what the mother is quiet about it. They can, they, can, they can see daddy beats mommy, but, but mommy is acting like everything is all right. And then they ask mommy, that mom, what is wrong? What is happening? And mommy is saying, don't worry, the Lord is here with us. The Lord will strengthen the Lord us. Control. The Lord is in control. <laughs> and all of this is what is actually eating, like, eating the whole nation up like a cancer. And it's making us have the nation that we have today. So if there will be any transformation in the nation. And that is the reason why I strongly believe that that was the voice of God. For us to come to the family. Because if the family can be healed, the nation will be healed. If things that are going on in the family can be addressed, I am 100% sure that our nation will be transformed. If a son is going through something in his family done to him by his dad. Mm. And he can come and say, Dad, can we have a talk? Mm. Dad, can we sit down and can we have a discussion about this? You did this and I didn't quite like it. Can we have a discussion? You see, that is one of the reasons why Nigeria is in its state where it is right now because of the kind of culture we have. We have a lot of things that have been, we've been, I don't want to use, I don't want to use the word brainwashed, but we've been somehow configured and we've been trained in such a way that silence is perceived as, as a virtue. As a virtue. <laughs> and, and like what Pastor said, said that the church has, has become the, 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 what, what should I use? Yes, the accomplice of this. You see, I know, I know the story of some of someone who happens to be close to me, who is in an abuse. She is in an abusive relationship, married to um, a man who is abusing her. Hmm. Now, the question is, why would she still be in that house? Knowing fully well that this man doesn't have any higher of value for her. Because I fail to grasp, I'm not married, and I, I'm, I'm not married, but I fail to grasp how a man would take a woman, would go to the family of a lady and tell the family that I want to marry this woman. And get this woman to his own house and start maltreating her and treating her as as a punch bag for me that is I can't reason it I, I'm not married yet but I can't reason it. it's to me it's it, it is beyond on I, I can't grasp it I'm like who does that that can happen but I tell you the truth that woman she she dares not, she, she can't even go to church and say, Pastor, I want to leave this relationship. Because what they will tell her is, no, divorce is not in the, in the, in the plan of God. No, you have to. It is the woman, they, they will tell her it is the woman that would, that will, oh. you, you have to persevere. No, you can't just leave your husband. Long suffering is a fruit of Yeah, they will tell you long suffering is a fruit of the, of the Holy Spirit. So why would you leave him? No. And then the woman is entrapped there because she has children. And so there is so much. And that is the reason why if this can be dealt in the family, I strongly believe that if this can be dealt in the family, Lord, then the nation has hope. Amen. Then the nation has hope. Because what makes up the nation, it is the families that makes up the nation. Yeah. 
And if things can be addressed in families, if we can have a, I just, I just picture, I picture a Nigerian family where we would have a round table. And then the daddy is seated, the mother is seated, the children are seated. And like, let's talk about this family. Um, son, what don't you like about what is happening in the house? And then we can have a round table. Well, that, that would make a whole lot of sense. Okay, dad, I noticed that um, you've been treating mommy in this, in this kind of way and we don't like it as children. Uh, and then we can address issues. One thing I discovered that makes it difficult for us to actually address issues is because we cannot separate persons from issues. And that is the reason why many times it is difficult for, for us to address issues because we don't want to address the person. For example, um, my, my dad is amazing, but let's just say there is this dad that sleeps around. And then the son happens to know that his dad sleeps around. Now, it is his dad. But the issue there is, his dad is involved in adultery. But because um, we have not been trained on how to separate, this is daddy that I, you are my father and I respect you as my father. But daddy, this is an issue. So we need to trust this issue and I still respect your person. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not going to say that because I, I see that you commit adultery now. I treat you as, as, a, as, as, as dumb. No, dad, I respect you as my dad. But then we need to trust this issue out. Yeah. So if we can break issues out of personalities, okay, dad, this is the issue. Let's talk about it. But because we can't address issues and because we can't I, separate issues from personalities, then we, we just decide to be silent. And like what Dr. Sunday said today, evil would not automatically disappear. Never. Anytime an evil occurrence starts, it starts to build. Never to end. But the only way that evil can be quenched. The only way evil can stop is when we speak against it. And what is happening in families would continually occur until people begin to speak. Imagine every, like you rightly said, imagine every woman who is physically abused or verbally abused goes on Facebook. And starts talking about it. Even the man himself will be a, he will be ashamed. He will pass low. He will take off. She just gets, she just, she just gets her, her iPad. She, she just gets her iPad and then she say, starts saying, okay, so I want to tell you guys about what happened. This is what happened. And then even the man will say will be ashamed. <laughs> but the reason why, and and the sad thing is. The, the people that, 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 that answers and solutions are expected from, don't, they don't bring the solution. Because people run to pastors. Mm. And then they tell their pastors, that pastor, pastor, this is what is happening in my family. Do you know the reply they give to most of them? The Lord is in control. Mm. Just go and pray about it. God will touch his heart. And then the woman goes to her to her knees and she starts praying to God too. And he keeps on beating her. And he keeps on beating her. And nothing changes. Mm -hmm. And nothing changes. And that, that is why I believe strongly that if we start talking, if we start addressing issues. I remember this word from um uh Lee Mouse Moreau. He said, Whatsoever you don't engage in you can never transform whatsoever you run away from whatsoever you avoid you can't change if you avoid it if you do not engage it if you run away from it it will continually remain but whatsoever needs to be changed must be engaged if there will be any change at all in any strata 
we must engage it. We must talk about it. We must speak about it and not stop until that changes. And would not keep our voice silent. We'll keep talking about it until the change that we want to see must, must come. And that is the reason why I really want to thank God for this topic. This topic is phenomenal. And if this topic is converted, I'm saying if the mothers listening to us right now, if the fathers listening to us can begin to imbibe this into their families practically and have a time where we say, okay, let's open everything. Let's not sweep anything under the carpet. No, no more sweeping anything under the carpet. No, 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 I'm not more doing that. But let us now have a dinner. During our dinner time, after dinner, let's talk about it. Uh, and what happened today? How did, I, how did I act today? Was there anything you noticed about my action today? Would you like to anything correct? Anything you don't like? Was there anything you don't like? Can you just talk to me about it? I would like to know. Wow. I'm trying to just picture that family. Men, superb. They, there's no fear. What I noticed is that there is no love in most families. Mm. Why? Because the Bible tells us what love is. It says, when there is love, perfect love casts out fear. Mm -hmm. But what we have in our families today, there is no love because fear is everywhere. Fear is everywhere. <laughs> fear has replaced love. Fear has replaced love. It's let's, fear. Let's hear what the woman said. Will <laughs> <laughs> you be bold enough to stop? Yes. Hello everyone, um, this topic is really heartbreaking. It's breaking because of the angle that uh, Dr. Mm -hmm. Sunday started to speak about it, the silence and the evil that the silence have caused. And you know, the, the challenges that we're facing now in society, that same challenge is because of this evil of silence. And like Dr. Sunday said, it started from the home the church started from the home because it's the people from the home that comes to the church. So we are from the home to the church. Um, and unfortunately, I have seen this too many times. Um, I personally, um, I think Dr. Sunday was talking about me speaking with respect to relationship and, you know, marriage and abuses. I have, I'm, I'm a single girl and I have not been married, but no matter what time anybody talks to me about marriage, the first thing I look at is their relationship. And I look at, I started from my relationship or my parents' relationship, and I see what happens in it. Culturally, traditionally, there's some um, errors that we as um, children now, that we, we are rejecting but not in the right way. We are rejecting it by saying that we're not interested in marriage, we're not interested in relationship. But rather than give a solution, like find a solution like Dr. Sunday is talking about, we're not even seeking the solution because we've seen so many atrocities that were caused by silence. And, you know, um, in church, if I start from church. In church, I've heard pastors so many times saying that we're not like our mothers. We're not like uh, back in the days, our mothers, they endure, they do this, they do that. But now, as soon as something happens, you leave. They are the propagators of this silence of evil because by telling you that if something is happening look at how dr sunday just explained to us by telling us that if something is happening we need to endure we need to stay in it and if something like this like this type of examples that dr sunday gave is happening and you're keeping you're keeping silent you're actually creating evil for your children for the future and it is very clear the examples are there from the step of just doing it to one person and you keeping quiet because it's not you to the step of doing it to another person and saying that because we're a family, because we're one unit, we shouldn't expose our secret to other people. Again, that's evil, evil that you're keeping for the future. You know, I've told, I was told this story of people that, um, of uh, a young girl, a young boy in church that is not um, well behaved and everyone would um, just say, oh, leave him or it's just a so-and-so um, child, just leave this child. And everybody would just say in the community, just leave him, leave him, leave him. And they left him to the point where even those that said this, at least it's not my children, that's his mother's problem. Later on, when he grew up, this child ended up killing the child of those people that are saying that leave him, leave him, leave him. It's not my problem. 
and this is the evil of silence or saying that it's not my problem it's not my child so um I, I, from my point of view of uh, a single person and a relationship and keeping quiet, um, being told to keep quiet as a female is something that I grew up with throughout. That I'm not patient, I should be patient, I should endure, um, I should uh, respect men, uh, I should honor men, I should be uh, all sorts of things. Um, it's now that we start. We should start using our brain, and I'm not. I'm not saying it in the rude way, but you start using our brain. Look at and use these examples or this um, to to change our world. Use these examples to change our world and have a voice. I hate relationship just because of this culture of silence. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's unfair. I hated marriage because of this culture of silence. That there's so much there's certain things that you can say to a man and there's certain things that a woman should should keep quiet and not do and also um the men boasting about it that women should be this way that women are the one that holds the house you know and they hold their house by being silent that's what they mean you know I, I, they say it, I, I come from a, a yoruba culture and they would say that uh woman holds the house how do you hold the house by you keeping quiet and enduring things that are wrong you know, the things that we kept quiet about, our children are seeing us, how the children sees us, and those things, they also keep quiet about it, and then they, they suffer in their lives, they suffer in their relationships. So it's really time now, we've seen the examples, we've seen the reasons why we shouldn't keep quiet, what we should do, the steps that we should take, the difference between keeping quiet as in um, covering the multitude of sins, and keeping quiet as in being part of evil, you know, being the propagator or the accomplice to evil. We've seen the difference between it. We have clear examples now. So there's no excuses, no excuse to say, I am going to keep quiet. I'm just going to let this continue. Love doesn't, there's no fear in love. Uh, Dr. Anu just said that there's no fear in love. So what, he's, what Dr. Anu and Pastor Sunday just said in terms of there is no love, there is no care by you loving other people more than you love yourself. We discussed about loving today in um, attributes that we love about Dr. Sunday earlier. If you haven't watched that, you should watch it later. But we talked about it that, um, that the love, there's no, no, there's no fear in love. That love um, gives because love knows that I have abundance. And if you have abundance of love, then you express it by not fearing, by speaking your mind in love and dr sunday said that he hates the sin that dislike the sin but it's not the person that you dislike so by you not saying something you're actually also disliking the person because you cannot truly love somebody by keeping quiet on something wrong that they're doing or they have done so please i i just want to urge everybody that we really need to work on this and make sure that we speak out we speak out as soon as something happens we speak out in love. We speak out the truth. And even when we're doing something that is wrong as well, not just speak out against other people, but speak out when you're doing something wrong. Because as others are doing things wrong to us, we are also doing wrong things to others. And we also um, suppress people to keep quiet. We expect <coughs> people to keep quiet when, they, when we are doing something wrong. We should not keep quiet over our own wrongdoings as well. So if you're doing something that is wrong, the, the best way to find a solution be the solution one to talk about. yes talk be the first one to talk about it discuss that i'm doing this wrong be truthful to yourself as well don't keep silent on your own issue too because if you keep quiet on your own issue you're encouraging that issue to grow and then when it grows to something that is so big then you would you know it will cause your problem in your future in your in your in your relationship in development with others so this is not just one-sided that we're keeping quiet just on what others are doing but we must not keep quiet on what we are doing as individual because we um i i think that um a lot of the time whenever we're talking about a a, 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 a behavior we look upon other people that are doing this behavior but we should also look upon ourselves as the um as a person that is behaving in this manner so um the first thing is that keeping quiet in the home is destroying it it goes out to destroy the church goes out to destroy the nations goes out to destroy the countries 
It's not everything start from the home. We are the, the, the nation. Are, we are the individual in the nation. We're not. Um, the nation is not just on its own. Uh, as as uh, without people, we are the people in the nation. So whatever behavior, whatever we see that the government are, are doing or anybody else is doing is because it started from us. It started from the own and we can do something about it. I really love the bold statement that Dr. Sunday made that we can stop it. We can, we can stop it. We can eradicate this um, silence and this abuse and this evil that is going on if we speak. He said we can eradicate 90%. Even though the ones that are reported are only the, um, the, the reported rapes and other issues in the home are only a minute percentage, we can still eradicate everything. We can, there, there will be no more abuses, no more silence. If we, there will be no more evil if we don't keep silent. So it's really time for us to now start speaking. You know? And you know, the other thing I want to mention is that in terms of relationship is that you are having a bad relationship that is very clear to other people. I'm talking from a, a female point of view. Everybody can see that this relationship is bad. It's not good. And you're going around. You, you can't see it. And you, oh, you know, but you can't see it. But you're going around telling young girls and other people that marriage is good. That marriage, um, marriage should be, is, is ordained by God. When clearly... Your relationship, yeah, and, is ordained from God. yes, it's ordained from God, but you're you're not a good example to be given that, you know, telling everybody that you, you should go into marriage when you are showing bad example of that, you know, if you if you want to if you want something um if if you so if something like marriage you believe you truly believe that it was ordained from God you shouldn't be enduring in silence you should know that you should do it clearly you don't help God. To cover, to make God uh, marriage good by you enduring and do and um, keeping silent. You should do the right thing in the marriage and also allow the right things in the marriage. It's not it's not right that you because you're uh, you're propagating um, uh, people to dislike marriage when in yours it's not good and you're telling other and others can see it. They're seeing all the problems and all the silence that you're keeping and you're going around telling others that it's it's great it's good. You're making God's work look bad. So please, for those that are that are really good at doing that, especially in the church, please stop. Keep don't keep quiet on on matters on the issues that we should um, we should speak about. Tell the truth. Let the truth self set you free. You know, don't hate the sinner, but this hate the sin. So this is about you identifying that this is a, a problem. This is an issue, and we want to deal with this issue. You don't deal with issues by keeping quiet and saying nothing. You deal with issues by speaking about the issue and 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 um, letting the person know that this is wrong. Or you you actually speak by you not allowing it, removing yourself from the situation. If you're not somebody that talks, because sometimes we think that silence or not being silent is about speaking. It's not just about speaking alone. It's about you taking action. Act your action. It means that you're not silent. So if somebody is doing something to you and you don't even want to talk, like verbally speak, but remove yourself from the situation, that is uh, that is um, not being silent enough. So there's verbal and non-verbal silence. So you know that you can speak by you just walking away, removing yourself. If you have to go away from that situation for a long time, then do that. But don't stay in it and start telling other people that it's good to have marriage and focus on just one thing and not be holistic in, in everything that is re related to the relationship. So you've heard it all. I don't really want to repeat what Dr. Sunday is saying because it's so clear, so simple. Even uh, you know, a child or somebody that doesn't even believe hearing this, they have clear and they would understand so I don't want to repeat. To share yes. And to join the, the brand yes. Brand. Dr. Sunday is just reminding me that I should tell you to share, share, share. So guys, please share this. They, and also don't just share. Copy the link and send it to somebody else because somebody will benefit from this. The people that probably are not on Facebook right now, they don't usually go on Facebook. But if you copy this link and send it to them, they'll be able to benefit from this because it's not... This is not just for one set of groups of people. It's for everybody. It's for them. even the children in the house. You know, if the parents are not going to listen to this, even the children would, can listen to this because 
they can hear this, they can have the understanding. God will give them clarity to know that they shouldn't keep quiet too. Because their parents, the so. yes, we, we, they shouldn't keep quiet. And this is an opportunity also for you to join the movement and see the reason. The, yeah, the movement. The, to see the value in the movement. The movement is the movement against deception. A movement against deception started, in the church. We started, we started a movement. We started a movement and it's called movement movement against deception in the church. So this is part of this teaching and previous teaching which started on the prostitution of Titan offering. And it's about the silence that we have kept for so long of the, all the atrocities in, the church, in churches all around the world, not just in Africa, but in, other, in, in England, I'm from England, in other European countries, in America, the atrocities that are being committed in the name of God by leaders within the organization, within the church, we want this to stop. We want the truth to prevail. We want a new church. We want people to be liberated. So this movement was started by Dr. Sunday and it's titled Movement Against Deception in the Church. There, there's a page, you can like the page. It's also it's on Facebook and there's a group. This group is important to join the group because most of the information or meet the last meeting we had was within the group because it's a, it's a closed group. So join both the page and also join the group. And also, there's a form, the form I will ping it on now on Dr. Sunday's page and on the movement page. Complete the form so that we can have your contact details and your, especially your email. We have a lot of we work to do. This weekend, we need to invite you. Yes, we have a lot of work to do and we have, um, we, we send out information, we send out communication. For example, we, we've already, um, we had the first meeting last Friday. We had the midnight, from midnight here, in Ukraine until 4 a.m. in the morning. You can see how important it is. Some of the information that was shared within that meeting, you will not believe it. So if you haven't joined, first of all, fill the form so that we will have your contact details. We have another meeting that is set for Friday. Maybe, 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 it's, maybe yes. this weekend. Yes, I said that. It, it, it's either going to be 11 a.m. on fr 11 p.m. this Friday evening, or, which is the 30th of June, or it would be in uh, on Saturday, 2 p.m. Uh, on Saturday. So we're 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 planning oh, either okay, both. Don't go and fill the form. Okay, Doctor Sunday is saying that you should just go and fill the form. It's important to fill the form because if you fill, it makes sense if you fill the form. We have your details, we'll so we can send you, you exactly when it is, and we can send you the thing you need to dial in or how you need to get in touch. So the first thing is to fill the form. Okay and um join the movement we need to stop this the deception that we've lived with in our homes we need to stop it in the church so that we can propagate it all throughout our own lives not just um uh in the church but in 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 life and in the nation as as a as a whole in countries and nations and continents we need the truth to prevail so thank you very much and tell me next Yes, let me just put uh, clarity there. We started the movement, and we shouldn't, uh, my wife shouldn't ever assume that people know. We have to start afresh, as if you never said it before. We started the movement, and the movement is called Movement Against Deception in the Church. Movement Against Deception in the Church. So this, this movement, we need you to go register if you want to participate in it, and if you want to stop the deception, you want to help and did all kind of you know, atrocities going on in the body of Christ. Isn't it? You want to join the group? You go, you, you know, my wife is going to pin it right now. Follow that link. Go and fill it out. Go and fill the form out. And then we will invite you to the meeting. Now, I have a question to all of you. When would you like us to have the meeting? When is it better for you time-wise? Should we do it uh, 11? Because it's going to be a long meeting minimum four hours meeting so we could do it immediately after the evening service on friday which is going to be like 11 o'clock our time here or 12 o'clock our time which is like 10 o'clock your time or nine o'clock your time in england and at nigeria and uh in the uk that might be no in america that could be uh four five o'clock 
in America Eastern time. So is it better to do it in the evening like that? Our time is evening. Or it's better to do it during the day on Saturday? Because in our place, it will mean at night. The last time we did it, we ended at 4 o'clock in the morning, our Ukraine time. So she would just do it. Is it better to just do it during the day on Saturday? Which would mean uh, 10 o'clock. I mean, which would mean uh, 12 noon. 12 noon Nigerian time and 12 noon British time. And uh, 7 p.m. Uh, in Eastern time in America. So is it better Saturday in the day or is better down, you know, deep in the night on Friday night? So you people, I want you people to say something. Please go ahead and write something uh, about that so that we could decide. Can we do 7 p.m. on Friday? You cannot do 7 p.m. on Fl Flora. Are you not on? That is our program now. I'm coming on Friday. We will not replace our daily broadcast. How can you uh, suggest 7 p.m. when that is a British time, when that is uh, the time of the daily broadcast? I didn't give you that option. Okay, 12, uh, 12 British time. Saturday, Friday, Friday, Saturday, or Friday, uh, 10 British time, or 9 British time. Okay, some are saying during the day, Saturday, some are saying uh, Fridays. Okay, anyway, you I, let everybody write down their opinion. We are going to count um, before I come back. Meanwhile, while you are writing it, I'm going to call, let's make ladies first. I'm going to call Caroline to speak first, then we'll call uh, Victor after that. But uh, you people go ahead and tell me Friday night or Saturday during the day. Uh, everybody write your time. While you are writing it, we are going to count which one takes the most votes is what we will do. Okay, Caroline, please come. Uh, I didn't say 2 p.m. British time because the reason I didn't say 2 p.m. British time is because 2 p.m. British time will mean 4 p.m. here. And that will not be enough time before my evening for broadcast again. So there is a reason why I said 2 p.m. I mean, 2 p.m. Ukraine time, which is 12 noon British time, not later than that. It, 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 it is either 12 noon British time or Nigerian time Saturday or Friday. Friday, uh, earliest it will be 11 p.m. here, which is 9 p.m. British time. So tell me Friday night or Saturday in the afternoon. You have to write your opinion because if you don't write it, uh, you then you will just count the ones who write it, who wrote their own. So the majority will carry the vote. Caroline, here you go. Hello, everyone. So Milo basically took my I think she's stolen some of my my wisdom. <laughs> so, you know, we've been around. hanging out together too much. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, I wanted to tell you a little story about myself. Um, when I was young, I used to be called a smart mouth, a smarty pa pants. And I was a I was a mean child, okay? Because when I would tell when I would be smart, I would tell the truth about your life. Okay? So that was the painful thing with adults with me, is that I will tell you the truth about yourself. And I got beat for that, and I got my punishment for that. But when I got older, and I started to develop a close relationship with God, he showed me that that actually was a skill. It just wasn't being used properly. It was a skill, because what he said is, on the hearts of men, I've written the law. So when you point it out, you're actually bringing forth what they already know. But if you wait, if you leave it silent, as Pastor has been saying, what you do is you give way for them to justify. You give them a leeway for, um, what do they call it, the crows of the air to steal from them. The opportunity to learn from a situation. And it was so true, because as I got older, I would say the truth to people, obviously now in love. And it turns out that if I had not said something, that these men or women who I would talk to would never have stop to really evaluate themselves, yeah. to really start to ask themselves questions. Why am I acting this way? Why am I doing this? And thank God I was a smart mouth when I was younger because today it doesn't matter what age you are. If I see something wrong, 
that, that, that you're doing something wrong that's damaging yourself. I have no fear in telling you exactly how. And now I know how to do it in love. And what I've realized is that it's helped so much people, so many people, to really see themselves in their true light. Because so many people don't understand what is holding them back. Why is it that whenever I get to this point, I always step on my, or shoot myself in the foot. And it takes someone to come by their side and say, hey, this is your reflection. This is who you are. This is the truth. Now, now that you see your reflection, memorize it and improve upon it. And that's what you're doing for people. You are not shaming people. You're not bringing them out to be humiliated. But what you are doing is actually allowing them the opportunity to memorize who they are so that they can improve on it. If you keep silent, what will happen is that they will go back and try to justify. Because what happens is people know when they've done wrong. People know when they have you know, missed the mark. They know. It's written on their heart. And to get rid of that feeling, they will do one of two things. They will either be honest with themselves or more likely what they will do is justify things. And the next time that they do whatever they did that was wrong, it will be worse because they justified the last time. But if you point it out, if you stop it right there and you see it and you say it, that was wrong. They too will be more likely to choose to look at themselves plainly, in plain sight, and they'll be more apt to start working on themselves, to start recognizing their wrong behavior. But if you keep silent, things could be worse the next time. So um, that's my encouragement today, is that maybe you are a smart mouth like me. You know, start to learn how to use that to not only your own advantage, but the advantage of the people around you, no matter their age. If you're the kid in, in the situation, honestly, I've been the child in, in many situations, but I found that it doesn't matter. When you are speaking truth, when God has given you truth to speak, your age doesn't matter. Yeah. So just when you see truth, when you see, you know, the honest truth before you speak it out, that's all you have to do. You don't have to beat someone over the head. Just tell them exactly the situation. And they will know it's written on their heart. You're only pointing it out. So that's my encouragement. Um, Victor, probably. Wow, wow, wow. wow. <laughs> So after all these people are smoking, one begins to wonder what is, <laughs> what, is, what, is there, what is left to say. Uh, the culture of silence, the culture of evil. Yeah. But so that we don't become a victim of the same topic we are talking about, we would uh, share the little or big opinion that it may be today. Uh, I believe Pastor must have touched on it extensively. But I also we still want to go back to the etiology, uh, the root cause of silence. And I think it comes from the place of a building of the ego and the id or id as you may know it of every child. And um, today pastor was talking mainly on family. So you realize that family is that social unit where identity usually are formed uh it is that place where where you begin if the parents if all they tell the children uh you're dumb you're stupid the child begins to feel stupid and dumb it is that place where if they are told that their views don't matter they, they want to share an opinion and uh all the parents can say skip short which i'm talking you are talking now which is uh, like the norm in an average african setting uh you find out that most african children or let me use the word nigerian because that's the settings i grew up in can hardly share their opinion their opinion is not welcome uh the last time they tried to say something they were met with a uh, shout of uh, keep quiet you don't talk where elders talk as a matter of fact it is the uh it is the mindset of the of an average yoruba person uh that wherever two elders are talking uh you should you cannot have an opinion as a as a child you are not allowed it is seen as disrespect it is seen as not valuing uh the elders that are talking where in fact the child there may be 
the one with the answer mm. and so these settings have become a kind of model with which the the generation before or the generation the, this generation that has been modeled or been trained build the next uh generation so the fathers before told their uh, told their children off while they wanted to share an opinion and so the parent i mean the generation now thinks uh, that is the right way to raise up a child and so they also tell their what's off now and probably if the chain is not broken uh, the same trend will continue so the families have not been building personalities also let us go back into what is the real reason why uh, families actually give birth uh, I've been opportuned to look into one of Pastor Sunday's work uh, works um, and that one was um, uh, who will come to your funeral yeah and who, who will come to your funeral really shows you and the book is not out so i'm giving you the advert here so when the time you get the time they release the advert make sure you are the first to get it really shows you that there's a system that the children that uh, parents are given birth to uh pastor calls it uh the spoke you know the, the way of becoming spoke in the wheel the spoke it's not really important but well, it's right here so uh that's why parents only give birth to children now they give birth to doctors they give birth to lawyers they give birth to titles i mean what, what are you having a boy again say i'm giving birth to a doctor so we are giving birth to people who will feel the system not necessarily people who are going to become personalities so we have never trained up our children to become our uh, personalities we are training biomasses <laughs> are, yes yes sir that's the right word we are training biomasses we are training somebody who will go into the system and just take whatever life offers and so we start training them like that by telling them to accept whatever we offer at home even when it is antithetical or it is against the ideals of that same child so we've told them that uh, they cannot choose what they want we've told them that uh, they cannot have options uh, that they must just take whatever it is uh, that they have been served you know for example maybe in the house the, this child does not like this particular type of food he just doesn't like it but he cannot voice out so we train them so much that uh, they now see silence as a virtue. yes as a virtue because now to be the good boy at home, I must keep quiet about the particular thing I don't like. Because if I am to talk about it, I am going to be the bad person. Thank God for rebels like us. <laughs> and until we met Pastor Sunday, we now knew okay, we were actually normal. Uh, we never used to align with the status quo. So it end us the name stubborn. Yeah, they call us stubborn. Like, that's how they say it you know the year so and that was because uh probably i saw a model in my own father and uh, i think it was in 2000 and, uh, 2010 i was opportunity to enter a the same bus traveling from abuja with the elder sister of my state governor then and uh she happened to be the a teacher in the school of nursing my dad attended while he was still a, a student then and family ties and my dad was a politician much later and she attested to the fact that if there were 20 of them i mean colleagues doing meant to do something my dad would stand firmly with his belief after analyzing and he chooses to go his way even if 19 are going this way and she said most times the 19 often come back to join him so i was uh lucky enough although he didn't live quite long uh to have a model in that man uh but when i got to when i got to the society it was different it was different people believe that once there is a an hierarchy you cannot have an opinion as long as the person who is uh, regarded as being at the top of that hierarchy are spoken 
even if it's not in line with your most dominant thought or wherever you're going to so uh the biomasses that families are producing i think is a is the etiology to this so if we can raise if we can from the level of families begin to raise children that are in that are going to be personalities beginning begin to tell these children that uh, these children that your 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 thoughts matter your your ideas matter i want to hear we want to hear what you think uh i think it will do us a lot of good and uh, the bane of this again is that many times we've not really been able to hear what these children uh, think and what they have to say and we've not really been able to help, help them shape how they should think and how they should reason and we've not been able to help them get better as a people and so we the, the whole place is messed up now because uh, we, we never listen to them when we should have and uh, the there's a Yoruba adage that says "Atike kere ni watin teka roko to badagba ton ebo ni o magba." Or better way to say it in English is you feel, you you fold the fish while it's still wet. When you dry, when you smoke the fish, you can't bend it again. So because we've not really listened to them, we've not really made them understand that their opinions matter. We've not even been able to build the right values in them. And I also think another issue is uh, the uh, misconception that uh, silence is humility. We live in a generation where uh, if you don't speak, you that you are not speaking, you are the very humble one. Uh, my brother Anu told me yesterday that he, he spoke about, uh, he gave an analogy of myself and him, and we have the same mindset the same reaction to certain issues but i just happened to be the one to speak and then they used to be the one silent and so people generally think oh i know it's the humble one victor is the proud one mm -hmm. but the truth again is is silence really humility is humility not the acceptance of one's own self and acting accord in accordance with who you are is humility not really vibrating in the frequency of yourself in relation to your environment? Is humility really not accepting yourself and also living with that self that has been accepted in an environment that you've been placed in? Is humility really not self-expression? Is humility really not being true to oneself? But we think, we've been taught, we've been conditioned that when you keep silent, you are humble. But when you are the one who can express yourself, you are proud. This concept must be rooted out. It really must be rooted out. And I think the people or where the embers of that are, are being found, the, those who find the embers of this uh, misconception uh, are even in the church okay. are even in the church because it is in the church that you really cannot have an opinion mm. when the pastor has said it that is all mm. I once I once was in a church where uh, when things go wrong people used to know they knew how to backbite the pastor but uh, I was the one who would come to the meeting and raise the issues. So I was the bad person. They were the good people. And I was looking at who is deceiving who. At the end of the day, posterity always judge. But things would have, you know, got worse than it should have if actually there was somebody who understood that silence is not humility and voicing out is not pride it is just an acceptance of who you are and the role you are to play in an environment what would your role be if you are the only one who can see this and you kept quiet mm. don't assume that the next person understand or what is happening it's just possible that he doesn't even have a clue 
you perhaps are the only one who understands the concept of everything happening in that environment and if you don't talk if you don't talk it may lead to the suffering of your generation uh, I'm not really sure with my fact, but I'll just put it out there and it can be confirmed. But I am guessing one of the reasons why Israelites spent much time in the wilderness was because the father-in-law of Moses did not talk on time. Did not give the real thing on time. Because until his advice, until his advice of sharing them into uh, different divisions and appointing eggs, they were still moving around the same mountain. But when he did that, it, leadership was easy, even for Moses. So I think that silence and humility are not on the same level and don't ever think that you talk too much because you raise pertinent issues. It will never be that you talk too much if the issues that you raise are very pertinent and important. Because talking too much is not in the quantity of speech. Many of us are online, we listen for hours. To one, same, to one person because of the quality of what they have to offer and yet somebody wants to speak to us for five minutes and we cannot afford to spend that time with such a person why because we have considered the quality of their speech so the same thing with you you will never never talk too much if what you have to say is addressing the important need of your society so don't ever keep quiet because somebody would have an opinion of how often or how frequent you talk you just want to be sure of the quality of your speech so silence is an evil that we need to root out and I think we need to start from the home by encouraging our children to speak to us to be more communicating and we also giving them <laughs> and we also giving them the listening ear, the listening ear. Yes. So if we if we do more of listening to our children and encouraging them to talk, not from the judgmental angle, uh, because if we give them the judgmental um, attitude, they will not come to speak the the next time, and you really would not know what is uh, going on with them, and you will not be able to correct anything. And they also will develop that uh, attitude of crawling back to their shell when real issues matter and the truth is that many times those who are silent carry the words that are a solution uh, pastor has said yesterday and i will quote again today as he quoted i think that should be albert einstein that the only thing needed for evil to triumph is when good men do nothing that's one that's Desmond Burke. Okay, that the only the only thing that is needed for evil to triumph is when good men do nothing. But don't forget again that we have a lot of good people who have been trained never to speak. They mind your business attitude. But the question is again, what is your business? A lot of us think our business are things that happen within our home, but we've forgotten that even the society is our business because we are a part of it. The church is our business because we are a part of it. Everything that vibrates towards your existence or that your existence vibrates towards is your business. And you need to speak where it does matter. Because there will never be a time that your voice will not count. Alright, thank you so much. I guess we'll see you another time. Thank you so much, Pastor. Yeah. Um, just one more thing, because I wanted to say this, and I never had the opportunity. Um, I think this is a perfect time to also ask that 
older men and women who have been, who have had their families, who have had their husbands and their wives and their children, whether you had a great experience or a bad experience, I think that it's necessary for you to share that with the younger generation. Because I found that whenever a young girl like me goes to an older woman and asks her about marriage, what she gets is the prescribed answer. What she gets is what's appropriate. What she gets is uh, what the husband will approve of. Um, but I had the opportunity of sitting with my mom and listening to a woman who was completely honest and candid about both the good and the bad in her relationship, where she went wrong, where he went wrong. She laid out everything about her relationship, and I can't tell you how healing that was. Not only for her, but for me, to be able to hear the truth about a relationship. I think Maya talked on it a little bit about how is it possible that so many people will uh, suggest to you get married and have kids and they themselves are not completely satisfied with the children that they came out <laughs> that they sent out into the world and they're not really happy about the way the marriage happened but they'll still say yeah you should get married you should get a husband you should get children and they won't sit down with you and tell you their faults they won't sit down with you and tell you where they went wrong where they could have done better because somehow that's taboo, somehow that's wrong, somehow that's bad, somehow that's disrespectful to the family or to their husband. But it, you will soon be gone, you know, and all that will be left of you is what you pass on to the next generation. If all, if, if all you pass on to the next generation was a perfect picture that can never be attained and you know it and you kept that truth from them, then what really have you passed on? You passed on a lie that will perpetuate itself. And we cannot continue to do that. I think that's what this platform is for, is to you know bring all this dirt up to the surface so we can clear it away. And I would say that one of the biggest things that is so hard for a young person to constantly be worried about certain parts of their future and not to have anybody to be honest with them. Mm. So please, if you have gone through any kind of experience, bad or good, be honest about all of it. Tell somebody, someone younger than you, who's going to be passing on that information to other people. You know, that can heal so many lives just by being honest. Pre prevent a lot, prevent of a lot of things. There wasn't, there were so many things I learned in this conversation with this woman who just sat down with me and my mother and just was candid with us. So many things that I have never heard any other woman say. Every other woman would say, oh yeah, we had our issues, but you know, God is faithful. And that's it. Yes, she had issues. So what were the issues? What happened? What could have you done? What could have you, what you could have done better? Like what was, where were the places that you went wrong? You know, how did you get there? What did you learn from that situation? You know, like we don't have class for that. There's nothing in school that teaches us that. Not, no Bible school sits you down and says, hey, these are the common issues that happen in marriages and these are how they get there. Nobody does that. It's up to us to take our experiences, you know. Uh, I talk a lot about how I'm an actress. You know, that's what art and drama is. Art and drama is to expose humanity to itself and say this is the truth of the situation. Don't be the same or be the same. Be good like this or be uh, better than this, you know. And that's who we are to each other. That's who human beings are to each other. We have not been given a manual for life. We've been given one another. So let's take on our responsibility by sharing our experiences. So thank you. Anybody want to say? Yes, sir. Yeah, please. Please, come on. We still have a woman's view here. This is mommy of Anu. This is Anu's mother. Please have your seat, mommy. Have your seat, brother. Hello everyone, I'm so happy to be among you tonight and I'm being blessed by what Daddy Sunday did like. No, 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 no. <laughs> Pastor Sunday, <laughs> what Pastor Sunday has been saying actually is a nice thing for someone to speak out. Silence is not too good and why? By talking, you are giving some others to learn more. 
from you. Yeah. But by keeping it within you, you are doing a great harm. Yeah. You know, while he was talking about raping, many have been involved mm. and which they kept silent. Mm. Even if you cannot say to the whole world, but at least people around you, either in the church, in the neighborhood, people that like to, to take after you, should be able, to, as he has rightly said, that don't say it involves you, but try and tell them that this and this. And you imagine how it happened to you. And by saying it out, either during youth week, either during family uh, set up, maybe family issues, try and say it so to prevent others from being involved in such things. Yeah. And even the young ones, tell them how they can easily prevent themselves from being involved in such a situation so being silent is not all that good even it is good because bible says when you know good thing and you refuse to do That's it right. it is a sin and again in marriage i love that my sister that has just spoken many people choose wrongly especially for our youth but if many people can come out and be able to say in my choice of getting married i went into a mistake of this or that that one will be a lesson for others that are coming behind That's to right. say if this thing has happened yes it must not happen to me yeah, yeah. but by keeping silence and telling them that all is good and you know that you have really made a mistake in fact god will not be pleased with you if you are doing that so i was i'm being blessed tonight and i know that before i know that i'm still going to get more and more i bless the name of god for as many that has involved in this talk i know will you come and compliment your mom <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> Hello everyone. Well that's my mom right there. Uh she she's been with us in Ukraine and uh she, uh, she came she came to celebrate with me uh in my graduation uh ceremony on Friday and uh, I'm so happy to have her around and uh I'm so happy that she also came out to talk. <laughs> Yeah, um, yesterday night we had, um, we had actually, it was in the evening, she was telling me her own experience of marriage. And she was telling me, and that's why I, I'm here to just concur what she said. And she was telling me how the whole process was for her and how she was able to make her choice, what she did, uh, the mistakes that some men made. And she was really very, very open with me. And, um, that is that is something i also uh i when she was talking when she was telling me all of that and i was just going through it and then just realizing the truth that she was saying and coupled with what dr sonny was talking about today why people who have gone through um, certain experiences should not allow it waste why because i believe there are many people who have gone through a lot of experiences that should be converted um, in, in, in such a way that the, the people who are just coming could learn from it and they could actually um, use those experiences to make their own choices um, even better. And uh, I, I strongly believe that this is um, opening up and uh, sharing your experience would help a whole lot of people. It would help make people... Um, make the right decisions it will help them also in um, making right choices so they don't repeat the same cycle of mistake that you have made and uh, I'm, I'm so i'm so happy to hear this and uh couple with the fact that my mom is here too and uh she she's hearing this firsthand and then we'll be able to also practice this in our house and uh i'm excited and uh thank you so much sir <laughs> yes sir all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. 
So thank you, everybody. I think we had a nice meeting today, and uh, I'm definitely going to continue tomorrow. But uh, you know, we're still trying to find out what day to do our meeting. But go ahead and fill the form, join the movement against deception in the church, and uh, let's join the movement. Go and fill the form. I will expect to receive a letter from us or from one of the committee members. All right. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful day. Bye.